This is not the Mona Lisa. It's a portrait of a girl named Lisa del Giconda, painted 10 years before the Mona Lisa, by the same artist, Leonardo da Vinci. And for a long time, the common consensus was that this is the girl in the Mona Lisa. Side by side, it seems that's about right. But what if we take a closer look and overlay the two images? We start to see some differences. The face, the eyes, the nose. You might even start to notice that these are not the same girl. In case this sounds totally insane to you, let me explain. For him, these are not small mistakes. This is facial proportions. The thing Leonardo was supposedly a master of. This guy legitimized the concept of the golden ratio and created the Vitruvian man. Two things we still use as standards of proportion. So mistakes like the size or placement of things don't make sense coming from him. Not to mention, he practically invented the testicle system of measurement. The middle of a man who sits, that is from the seat to the top of his head, is below the breast and below the shoulder. This sitting part, that is, from the seat to the top of the head, is as much more than half the man as is the size and length of the testicles. So what's the deal? Why are these two faces, supposedly the same girl, not matching up? Well, some experts are starting to speculate that this one is a self-portrait. And this isn't very strange. He was known for doing a lot of self-portraits, even in analytical drawings or things that weren't supposed to be self-portraits. What are those things doing there? Well, a lot of the time, the figures in his paintings are meant to be genderless. Like this painting of Jesus, he was also gay. You guys need to stop praising Lil Nas X for inventing this combo. In fact, Leonardo deserves credit for inventing basically everything in the modern world. Dentistry, grooming, anatomy, Paleontology. Paleontology, being gay, this painting. Don't forget grooming. Yeah, I'll get into that in a minute. I guess he forgot to predict cancel culture. He also pioneered being a Sigma male. Here's a quote. Can we get that, the music? The art of procreation and the members employed therein are so repulsive that if it were not for the beauty of the faces and the adornments of the actors and the pent up impulse, nature would lose the human species. Also, I should mention, apparently to him, the female parts were so disgusting, he became gay. He also thought that female parts were just inverted penises. Yeah, you could see why it's highly debated which of his ideas hold up today. Some of them very poorly, but others, it's kind of scary how well. You got parachutes, solar panels. Is your refrigerator running? Well, you know who's to blame now? Satellite maps. Cause who needs a satellite? Planes, automobiles, and this death trap. This is his concept for a fighting vehicle, also known as a tank. The design was made in the period of his life where Leonardo was tired of painting. He wanted to put all of his knowledge to the test and become an engineer. The easiest way he saw to do this was to offer to build weapons of war for the Duke of Milan at the time, Ludvico Sforza. And after getting him as a patron, he designed this, an impenetrable moving fortress. A vehicle that seems like sh it's straight out of the imagination of a first grader. You gotta have four people inside turning these cranks to move it forward, and yet this thing, it only moves forward. And not even that actually, because the original design plan had the wheels moving inward towards each other, so it would just stay put. Some have assumed this is intentional because he didn't actually want his inventions being used in war. And on top of the wheels, you got 32 cannons. Make this look like a dumb workshop creation from Besiege. To fire them, you gotta have the four dudes moving the cranks run around and light each of them individually. And since this thing is capped off with a wooden dome, there's no light in there. So Leonardo's thinking cap solution was to put fire inside of an enclosed wooden capsule with lots of gunpowder in the middle of a battlefield. Here's a visual representation of how that would go. Here's an audio representation of how that would go. They won't show you that on History Channel. This here is an early prototype he made for what would become scuba gear. And yes, the snowtrooper suit from Star Wars. The mask has a tube attached to the front made out of cane stem, a material he chose based on what he knew about water pressure. I'll reiterate, this is 500 years ago, so nobody knew what water pressure was. He had to discover this on his own without any of the fancy scientific tools we have today. In fact, most of his vast knowledge came from observing things 
with his two eyes and recording what he saw through writing and drawing in his journal. This website, Codex Atlanticus, is dedicated to digitalizing all of this stuff. They've already got over a thousand pages and you can go just flip through it and see firsthand how he was making all these accurate conclusions without ever even touching a science textbook. Like here, these are some drawings he made of water. This is a cascade hitting another body of water. This is some water interacting with some shapes. He wasn't just drawing to make a pretty picture or anything. He did this to try and understand its various properties and how it interacted with things. And I think this is a very valuable lesson that everyone should be taking from Leonardo. That is to observe everything and question everything. Not just casually, like obsessively. It's what gave him his superpowers that he's known for. In the words of the guy that wrote this short film, I have studied countless faces, attempting not just to see how they look, but who they are, to find God's truth in my own. Now to address the pedophile, to address the pedophile in the room. If you couldn't tell from the title of this video, I believe that the public view of Leonardo is not accurate to reality, or at least it's not painting a full picture of the man. Specifically when it comes to his relationship with his supposed lover, John Giacomo. John Giacomo. John Giacomo. The most common portrayal I see of the story on the internet and in media like Assassin's Creed is that of a cute father-son lover type relationship between a younger and older gentleman. You know, normal. But these stories consistently leave out what I consider to be a pretty crucial detail. That is, when they met, he was 10. But I gotta refrain from writing him off right now as the next island owner. You need the full context before we make any judgments. He was a weird guy from a long time ago, culturally about as much in common with us as an Italian man. Around the year 1490, a boy named John Giacomo joined Leonardo's house as an assistant. At this point in his life, Leonardo was an established artist, and aspiring artists would often flock to him in hopes of becoming one of his pupils. John was one of those, and when he met Leonardo, he was excited. He was also 10 years old. Their friendship was complicated. Leonardo described John as a good painter, but also a liar, thief, stubborn, and a glutton. He was prone to antics. Leonardo would bring him places often and he would just make a scene, as illustrated in this cutscene from Assassin's Creed. Gian Giacomo. I do not answer to that name. Leonardo, your master requests your presence. Let him wait. No. However, despite this and the many rantings in his journals, Leonardo couldn't help but take a liking to the boy in his rebellious spirit, eventually giving him the playful nickname he's most well known by today, Salai. Salai. Which translates to Little Devil. A nickname which should not be given to any kid by their art teacher. Moreover, Leonardo and Salai's friendship would blossom. They were so close, they even made paintings of each other. Oh no. However, like I said, it's complicated because while there is this, which is not good, there's also the claim, which is made by many historians, that Leonardo devoted himself to celibacy. While his journal entries are lengthy and cover just about every part of his day, there's barely any reference to him having intercourse at all, besides drawing some insanely disturbing depictions of it. What is this math for? and I feel like he would have at least mentioned it. I mean, if you were to put that next to some of the other stuff he writes about, it would be extremely tame. Additionally, if the celibacy theory is true, I don't think it would have had anything to do with his religious views, because his feelings towards sex come across as much more of a personal hatred towards it. You heard the quote from the beginning of the video, sex is done, there is no coming back after that. And there's plenty more where that came from, which is why I think the celibacy thing would make a lot of sense. In her book, A History of Celibacy, historian Elizabeth Abbott says, some claim Salai was his lover but I prefer to describe him as a keeper of Leonardo's erotic fantasies. I don't think that he actually had s with him. He dressed him up lavishly like a doll in pink and dandy field clothes and extravagant stockings and 24 pairs of shoes. Huh. Yeah, this is like 10 times worse than that picture. Like what if P. Diddy said, nah, I didn't do anything with them. They were just the keeper of my erotic fantasies and I dressed them up lavishly. Also, I painted this, but I hate to say it, this is still not actual evidence of anything. No, there's only one 
piece of that. One accusation of being gay, we got him, guys. formerly known as sodomy, which they have documented because it was a crime at the time. Now, obviously, this is a long time ago, so we don't know how valid the accusations are. All we know is that the law was involved. Anyways, you could see why this is a highly debated topic, but I don't know. Pushing everything aside, Leonardo took this kid under his wing when he was 10, and when he got older, they got more intimate, and I don't see many people acknowledging this as being kind of creepy. It's usually portrayed as sort of a cute love story, like in Assassin's Creed. A perfect segue into some awesome Assassin's Creed clips. Let's check it out. Mm. 